Thank you, Mark. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming to in, uh, partake in our, our seminars that we, we again, he, we mentioned we do this every month, and we like to focus on topics that are important to the startup and emerging, business, emerging businesses. And so my, my portion of, of the talk today is going to talk about accounting solutions for startup. So when I say accounting solution, I'm talking about a software solution uh, as a way of kind of tracking your expenses, running reports, um, and maybe as a, also a place where you can, can collaborate and, and work together. In case there's a question out there, yes, the slides will be available uh, for those that want it. And uh, if you have a question, uh, you can raise your hand. Um, but we will save a section at the very end for any questions. So if you have a question, please uh, just jot it down on, on a piece of paper, and we'll, we'll be happy to address them. So the first question you're asking is, well, what accounting solution should I use? So before I answer that question and just say, okay, here's, here's a solution, I kind of want you to go through the thought process of what you should be thinking about. And what you should be thinking about when selecting a software solution is who is keeping the books? Because depending on who's keeping the books is, is going to dictate in which direction you should go. So for the people that are going to do it yourself, so those that are, you know, I, some, don't, don't do it on a spreadsheet. Don't do it, don't do that as a way of, of tracking it. I, I know Excel's you know, free to some people or Google Docs, whatever. Don't do that. Okay, you want to have a, a very robust system that's able to handle multiple functions of your company, whether it be handling the invoicing, whether it be handling the payables, uh, handling the bank reconciliations, handling uh, even payroll. You kind of want to have that all in one place. So we would recommend at least at a, at a minimum having an outsourced bookkeeper to help you. If you're not an accounting person or have any knowledge of debits and credits and what's an asset, what's a liability, bring in an outsourced bookkeeper at least to kind of help you put things in the right bucket. And they'll be uh, more affordable in terms of kind of get you going in the beginning. Billable rate is typically around $50 to $75 an hour is what typically they'll charge. Some of them have been kind of shifting and going from instead of an hourly basis, they'll do what they call a, a value billing. So it'll be just kind of like a flat fee, maybe $250, $300 a month. Uh, and they'll pay that monthly or even uh, quarterly. And they'll say that and we'll, we'll do your bank rec, we'll make sure that uh, all the transactions are entered, uh, bills are entered. And so your interaction may be on a day to day, it may be from week to week, it could be um, month end, depending on the activity level of your business. You could also hire a larger bookkeeping service firm. So instead of maybe hiring a one bookkeeper, it, it's, a, it's a company and they have a team of bookkeepers. And so there's a team on your account. So it get, tends to be a little bit more expensive. However, you, you should be able to have a little bit more uh, uh, insight or, or there'll be more activity on your account uh, on a more regular basis. And then, of course, you could always go with a CPA firm. It'll probably be the most expensive, but at the end of the day, you're going to have good financials. They're going to be pre uh, prepared in accordance with GAAP, which are generally accepted accounting principles. Um, you're going to use these financial statements for one, measuring your financial success of your company, but it also could be as a tool that you would use uh, in terms of getting lending, whether it be from private lending, uh, from a bank, if you're going to get an SBA, you're going to need at least a, a good set of financial statements and then a historical uh, tax returns. You're going to need good tax returns. If you do it yourself, you run the risk of saving money up front, but then there's going to be a lot of cleanup and work done at the end. So you may be just really at the, just deferring that payment is what ends up happening. So, but I recommend if you at least have the outsourced bookkeeper and maybe in conjunction with a CPA firm, we'll be checking in on a quarterly basis to kind of see if there anything needs to be adjusted or tweaked. We can do that earlier in the process instead of at year end when kind of everything comes in. The next question you should ask is, uh, where is the work being done? And when I say where is it being done, I'm not, not saying at your office, is this going to be done? Think of what the, the workplace looks like. Think of, you know, do you have a BYOD, which is a bring your own device policy? Are people coming on their laptops? If you get a software solution where you install on a laptop, if they go and leave with their own device, and then, well, there goes your software. You can tell them to install it and install another machine. But you run into a little bit of issue there. You also have the issue of, uh, what if you have a mixed environment? You've got some people using Windows laptops. Maybe you have someone on a, on a Mac laptop. It's, it's very common to have a hybrid system. If you go with a cloud-based interface, you're using an internet browser to interact with your accounting solution. So we would recommend going with a cloud-based solution based on the fact that, one, you would have instant collaboration with your accountant. The books would always be available to you. It's not going to be uh, in my office or in, in the bookkeeper's office. Sometimes they'll, they'll keep the books for you. And so you always have immediate access to those reports when you need it. 
you have that instant collaboration. If you have a question, um, you know, hey, Fernando, how do I do this? You can get on the phone and we can instantly look at a, a similar transaction at the same time and get your issue resolved in, in a matter of minutes. Um, the other th option that's, uh, it's not listed on here, but there's, there was something called a hosted environment. And the hosted environment is essentially a server. Uh, so instead of it being at your physical location, it's going to be on a server that you connect to remotely. And you can do it on either on a PC or a Mac using a remote desktop connection to interface with your software, like a desktop software. And then once uh, you have the backups and you have the infrastructure there to, in case of uh, you need a backup or data recovery or something happens, they, they have those redundancies. So you don't need an IT department on, like where you have a local desktop. You have to make sure you have backups of your software. You want to make sure the infrastructure is all there. Um, I've seen issues where sometimes even people talking to each other in the, the same network becomes an issue. But if you get an IT person involved, it can help out with that. With a cloud-based solution, it's very simple. It's easy to just get on and uh, get access to your, to your file. And it's easy to add permissions and take away permissions, too. So our recommended solution is QuickBooks Online. And again, because of a cloud-based solution where you're allowed to instantly collaborate, you have the ability to have robust reports. You also, as a, as a core product, you're able to do a lot to take care of your receivables, to take care of your AP. Uh, you also have the ability, if you wanted to turn on payroll, you have the ability to take care of 1099s uh, for your subcontractors that you're supposed to uh, file at the end of the year. So if you can kind of get all of this done at the same time. Um, you also have some collection tools that are available to you. And I, and I mean that meaning, let's say you have a, a bunch of uh, receivables, a bunch of invoices that haven't been paid. You can kind of look, OK, here's everything over 30 days. I'm going to take everything that's over that period and assess the finance charge directly. So you can charge your, your customers that have not been paying you at, an interest of finance charge. Those are, tend to be features that when we look at other, we have looked at other accounting softwares out there. We did look at Xero. We looked at WaveApp. We looked at uh, NetSuite and Intact. Those are all software solutions that are, are great in their own right, but specifically for the startup community and, this, and the types of services you'll need, uh, the types of services you'll need, that's going to be kind of, um, it'll address those needs that, that uh, you need to get taken care of. So again, it's simple yet robust. Accessibility, everyone's able to access it. It's cost effective. So in terms of pricing, there'll be another slide on how much it costs. And then on apps, there's over 375 apps available to integrate with your accounting software. So QuickBooks Online as a core product is, it, it's good on its own right. If you want it to be a little bit more robust, say you want to add an online document management system, so you, instead of having paper files and file cabinets, you can have everything scanned. Um, things directly sent from your email and then that push into your accounting <coughs> software, you can. If you want to have the ability to have uh, expense reporting, so your sales guys, when they take pictures uh, with their phone, a picture of the receipt that automatically gets uploaded, you can automate a process to get expense reports done. You can do things like um, all kinds of things. Time tracking software um, that you can do to monitor the hours of, of, of your employees. So there's lots of capability. You can in introduce a CRM system, uh, uh, client relationship management, so you can keep track of sales leads and those type of things. And then this is the pricing model. They have what's called a simple start, the essentials, and plus. And it's about $13, $27, and $40. And the difference between the tiers is in this one, uh, it handles everything, but it doesn't include an AP function, and it doesn't include inventory. And the other thing is it's just for one user. You can invite, when I said, well, what about collaboration? You can work with an accountant. You can invite up to two account users. They, they don't count towards your user license. So it's just one, meaning for just the, the one person, and then you have your two account users. In the essentials, you have three users. Uh, so it's you, maybe two other people, and then you can kind of adjust the permissions slightly so that they're not an administrator. They can't handle any of the billing or see some certain sensitive information. Um, maybe you just want just a time track or just pull reports. You can have them as a user. And then, again, the same, the two account users. And then the plus, uh, again, this, is, this one does not have inventory. This one does. So you have inventory. And if you do have 1099s, then we would recommend getting the, the plus product. Uh, again, the one that kind of, uh, just to that. Uh, go ahead. I, I have two questions. Yes. One is, the middle one there, yes. uh, you didn't mention anything about payroll on any of those. So any Correct. This is just accounting. We're talking about just accounting solution. And the payroll is going to be another piece. Okay. One on the right, I can't remember how much it was. You could do 1099 employees? 
1099, yeah, 1099 is not an employee. 1099 is, yes, yeah, as a contractor, <coughs> right? You're supposed to report, uh, so if you get an independent contractor, which means they're not on your payroll, the one on the right. The one on the right because you're tracking your vendors and you have the ability to add their tax ID and then at the end of the year, you push a button and then it'll prepare your 1099s for you. Thank you. Yeah. So Fernando, yes. If, if, I mean, if you just have a couple of 1099s, yes. you know, it might not be worth paying the extra premium just so you can have that function, right? Correct. Um, depending exactly on the volume and the number of, of 1099s. And there's another level of complexity, but in terms of just as a base product, which is why, like you said, if you don't have that many 1099s, you could go that route, or you could do this, and then you can hire someone, a CPA firm, to prepare those actual 1099s for you. It doesn't have to be within your built-in accounting sol solution. You can use a third-party app, or you can use uh, a third-party, period, uh, to help prepare those 1099s. And then one last question, Brad. You said the one on the left did not have AP? Did not have an AP function. You can have unlimited invoices sent out. It's like AR, and it also has your download, you know, uh, download your bank fee to automatically add those transactions for that automation. So it's a very simple product, but if you're going to have an AP function where you're going to have vendors, um, but I also recommend at least one here because now you have more than one user instead of just being the one owner or whoever's in charge of the, the books and then your two account users. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there is, we're pro advisors, and what that means is we've gone through a certain level of uh, certification with Intuit. Um, that we're trained and knowledgeable on this software, on the desktop and on the online software. And as pro advisors, we're allowed to an extended discount to our clients, and there's a 30% discount. So if you're interested in acquiring this, um, it's $27, but if you go through, through a pro advisor, these, these prices all drop by 30%, so you'll be paying $18 a month. And so I talked about for a startup in terms of affordability, when you talk about a software subscription model like this, $18 a month is a lot, it's an easier, to swallow than paying $300, $400, $500 for an accounting solution in a desktop environment. Uh, I said pro advisors, and so we have a team of pro advisors and accounting consultants that are very familiar. So ASL, we can support you. Uh, I can support you. you know, Christy can support you. Uh, we can all help you. So in terms of maybe getting your accounting books set up, getting your chart of accounts, and so make sure everything's kind of set up to, to what you want. We have the ability to, to help you out with that. And uh, is QuickBooks Online the best tool for the job? There are certain instances where we say, you know what, I understand with all the great things that are about being a cloud-based product, sometimes it just, that's not the right fit. And it really comes down to your company and what, you, what your needs are. And Christy's going to talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. Switch waters. Sure. Okay. So, um, again, we feel for most of our clients that the majority of your needs could be met by QuickBooks Online but there's a few times where you might want to consider a different solution. Um, for instance, think about whether you're going to have um, good internet where you're going to be working. If you're working in a cloud-based software, you're going to need to make sure you have good internet connection. Um, so if you have spotty internet, it, that might not be a, a good solution. Or if you're going to be doing your work primarily where you may not have internet access, then you might want to consider a different solution. If you need more advanced user permissions than are available in QuickBooks Online, they, they do have uh, certain levels of permission, but you can get more advanced in, and a deeper level in, say, the desktop solution. If you perhaps are running multiple companies. Um, I have a client. She has four entities plus her individual, and there's some economy of scale of choosing the desktop and running them all on the desktop. Uh, as opposed to having five different subscriptions with QuickBooks Online. So another thing to consider. If, for some reason, you're not comfortable with the idea of being in the cloud, if you will, um, or if you have chosen, um, say, a, a bookkeeper or a bookkeeping service was one of our options, if they prefer to use a different software solution, uh, then you'll probably be going with whatever they're comfortable with, um, or you can shop around and, and try to find someone if, you're, if you'd like the QuickBooks online option to find someone that, that can offer that. A couple other reasons um, that QuickBooks online might not be the best solution for you is it doesn't do full job costing. So if that's a need for your business, you'd want to consider a different solution. And um, the online version, is it, what its real strengths are is it's its accessibility, its ease of use, and its collaboration. And what you might not have as robust in the online version is the level of 
customization that you can do. So if you require a, a high level of customization of your forms and reports and what have you, you might want to consider a different solution. Get this, get it set up? Yeah, Absolutely. I haven't, we, we, we feel that, that one of the reasons we've chosen QuickBooks is that it's really one of the best supported softwares out there. So if you do need help getting things set up, um, there's a, a variety of people, pro advisors or bookkeepers that are all very familiar and could just help you with the setup part. Um, you can actually go through the training yourself if you want to and, and learn you know, the pro advisor training if you wanted to learn a little bit more about the accounting side of things. But you know, QuickBooks Online, it's, it's a pretty easy to get started on it and they'll, they'll give you a set chart of accounts and what have you. If you need more than that, you might want to work with an accounting professional to get things set up and then you can run it ongoing. Um, but it, it really is one of the easier ones to set up that, that we found, I think. Yes? And I'm assuming that as the company grows, you can upgrade the next level or two. Yeah, so, so easy, very easy to do in QuickBooks Online. So um, we'll talk about the, the next, the desktop solution in a minute. But say you chose the essentials, which was that middle one, and you, then you've decided that you really need the functionality of the next one in QuickBooks Online. It's very easy to upgrade your subscription on that. Um, so you're, you can move easily with your needs on that. <coughs> so um, Fernando had talked about the cloud-based and the local desktop. So if you've decided for some reason that, that you're not going to choose the cloud-based, which was our recommended option, then the best local desktop solution would be QuickBooks Premier 2016. And um, there's a couple different levels of QuickBooks. This is the middle one, again, kind of like we did with QuickBooks Online. One of the things you need to consider when you're doing the desktop version is, and it kind of comes back to, to your point, you're going to need to think ahead and maybe talk to your accounting professional about what your needs are going to be for the next couple of years. Uh, the, the local desktop solution, that's something that you install on your, on your laptop or, or your computer, is a little bit higher price point up front. You're not paying a monthly subscription, but you're buying the software up front, and into it which is the, the group that owns QuickBooks, will support the desktop versions for three years. Uh, you can use it after that. I have clients that definitely are using older versions than that, but as far as being able to, to have the Intuit support, that, that will happen th for three years. So you'll want to think ahead about what kind of functionality you're going to need and how many users you're going to need on the desktop solution because it's not as easy uh, it's easy to move up, but it's expensive because if you've already bought this software solution and you need to move to the next one, you're going to need to buy that software solution. So um, a little bit more flexibility, agility on online, uh, being able to move up or down. Desktop, you want to think ahead a little bit about what your needs are going to be. Uh, and as I mentioned, the desktop can offer a, a, a higher level of customization. So uh, in Premiere, they actually have industry-specific modules. There's six of them, um, including contractor version, uh, retail version, and a nonprofit version. So what that's going to give you, and, and it's kind of back to your point, is helping you to sort of customize that setup process right from the start. So for instance, um, if you're a nonprofit, it's going to give you the right chart of accounts, which is the, the general ledger accounts that you're going to be posting your accounts and your income and expenses and, and your activity to. It's going to give you a customized one that fits that industry. And also when it comes to the forms and the reporting, it's going to give, it's already going to have that built into that industry specific one. So for instance, again, for nonprofit, a, f a form that will be already available in there would be a donation letter for your nonprofit. So what you get with the desktop is maybe a higher level of customization, um, but it's a little harder to collaborate with your clients. So you're going to be basically passing that file back and forth with them 
Um, there's different ways to do that. But as the accountant, if I'm waiting to prepare your tax return, I need to get your books. If we're both online, I can do that easily anytime because I have access to your books. But if you're on the desktop solution, you're going to need to make a, a copy of your file or a backup and you're going to need to send it to me and then I'm going to need to send it back to you. So there's some extra steps that go through on the collaboration part with that. And remember, um, we have a number of pro advisors here and I think Fernando mentioned you can become certified as a pro advisor in both the online version and in the desktop version and in the different levels and some of those um, custom industry models. So depending on who you've chosen to work with as your accounting professional, you might want to ask if they're certified in, in the version that you've chosen to use. So the next topic we wanted to cover is the best payroll services and human resource options for startups. We're covering a lot of data today, but we wanted to give you a good overview. So let's talk about payroll first. And you know, payroll is easy for me. I'm an employee. Every two weeks, I get a direct deposit. I pick up my pay stub, and yeah. it's, it's real easy. But there's actually a lot of um, activity that goes on behind the scenes when you're an employer to support that process. Um, so I just wanted to go briefly through those steps. And we'll kind of start with the do-it-yourself, um, as we did before with the accounting solution. So when you're doing payroll yourself, you'll be setting that all up yourself. And then depending on how many times you run your payroll, you'll collect the hours and make the salary changes or put the new employee information in. Run your payroll. You'll withhold uh, taxes from your employees, uh, both the uh, Social Security and Medicare, as well as income tax withholding that they signed up for on their W-4 and any benefits that they're helping to contribute towards. And then you need to turn around and make those payments, those tax deposits, to the appropriate taxing authorities. And there's some regulations around the timing of that. It can be tricky. Uh, and you want to make sure that you understand the regulations on the timing that those deposits need to be made. So you'll be in charge of do doing that if you're doing it yourself. Then on a quarterly basis, you will file payroll tax returns that reconciles what you've paid uh, and collected and what you've paid into the taxing authorities on an annual basis. Again, you'll be filing an annual tax return as well as providing your employees with W-2s so that they can prepare their tax returns. Uh, a W-3, which is a summary of your W-2s that needs to get sent to proper taxing authorities. And if you have independent contractors, then you'll need to provide them with 1099s and make sure those get e-filed and sent out to the right uh, authorities. So again, there's a lot of activity that goes behind that payroll. And it's very deadline driven. And it's also very punitive if you don't make those tax deposits or file those tax returns on time. Um, there can be large penalties and interest. So that's sort of the do-it-yourself mo mode. If you were to use a payroll service provider, they would help you get set up. And then on an ongoing basis, you would provide them with the hours or new employee information and or salary changes, and then they would take care of that tax deposits, the filings for you, of course, for a, uh, a processing fee. So let's take a look at, um, again, kind of talking back to who your accounting solution is that you've chosen can influence what payroll solution you might choose. So let's say you've decided to do it yourself. We would recommend adding the QuickBooks payroll um, to do the payroll. Now they have just the software that you can do it all yourself. They also have a full service uh, providing, provide where they can do all of those activities we talked about where you're just going to give them the hours and the salary and they will make those tax deposits and do the reporting and, and uh, the annual reporting for you. So they do have that level and I would I would recommend that you consider doing that so that they can take care of that for you if you're going to do it yourself. Now, if you chose um, as your accounting solution to have a bookkeeper or a bookkeeping firm, uh, you would want to talk to them about whether they offer payroll services. Many do, and they could run the payroll for you, in which case you don't need to worry about the software because they'll be providing that software for you. Also, one great hybrid solution is if, you, if you've chosen to do it yourself, bringing in um, a bookkeeper, a bookkeeping firm, or a firm, a CPA firm like ASL, 
on a quarterly basis to do reporting might be a good solution. So I, I have a client, they have a very stable California only payroll and they run their regular payroll, but they have me do their <laughs> quarterly and annual reporting just to make sure everything gets filed correctly and, and reconciled. So that's a good hybrid. Yes, sir? Um, does ASL have the ProVisors discount on QuickBooks payrolls? Yes, we do. Yeah, and we've got some more detail on that that we could share with you after about the, the pricing of that. And then we have the, the well-known payroll uh, providers, ADP and Paychex. Uh, and they can do all of those payroll functions for you. You might be thinking that you're a small business or an emerging business and you might not be able to afford a firm like that, but I've um, talk to both of the reps and they are actually really interested in working with emerging and small businesses and they have some really competitive pricing for a small number of employees. So it's definitely something to consider. Uh, one of the benefits is that you can do some add-on services we're gonna talk about in a minute. So you know, we're, uh, ASL is a professional accounting firm and it might surprise you that we outsource our payroll to a payroll provider. That's how important we feel it is. It's complicated, and um, so we do, and we think you should too, choosing one of these solutions that works best with the accounting solution that you've chosen. And then we'll add one other thing is, as you start getting uh, employees, or maybe you start working with multi-state, and maybe you start working with uh, international, you may have some engineers that are working from out of the country. There's a lot of complexity that goes with that. And so if you go with a larger firm like an ADP or a Paychex, they'll be able to handle the more complex issues than maybe your local bookkeeper who may is not familiar with the regulations of those states or countries. So that's just something to think about. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about human resources, HR. Yes, sir. Um, we've heard of Gusto. Have you used Gusto? I don't have clients that use Gusto. I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know of it, but it, not to the extent that I'm willing to put my name on it and recommend it as a product for you. Does that make sense? So, so the reason we've chosen QuickBooks is because we feel it's well supported. You can get a lot of people know how to use it and you can get good support for it. There's a, actually, there's a lot of different um, payroll providers. Right, so Bench.co is a Canadian-based company and they outsource the bookkeeping and their pitch is the $125 will do your bookkeeping for the month. Uh, again, you're having a remote solution, you are bringing an accounting professional into it. We don't have enough experience with them to say we have a, a really a positive or negative opinion of them, uh, but these are trusted solutions that do yeah. work. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think the point is there are a lot of different um, accounting solutions, payroll solutions, and, and th there's a lot of good, good ones, right? Um, what we're trying to do though is it can be overwhelming to make the choice. We're trying to, to boil it down to what we feel right now is the best practice for an emerging business <coughs> such as yourself. So let's talk about the HR function. Um, I'm an accounting professional as, and so is Fernando. So we actually talked to our <coughs> HR professional here at ASL to get some perspective on this as well as some of the reps that offer HR services. So a couple of, of bullets about why HR is important. There's the hiring, onboarding, and terminating process. So now when you're getting into employees um, and in the hiring process, you actually need to be aware of what you can ask when you are interviewing a, a potential employee, what you can ask their references. Onboarding, that's a cool word, I like that. Um, I, I just started at ASL about four, four months ago and I, I spent time onboarding with our HR. So what that is, is that first day that you come in, all of that paperwork that you do when you're bringing your employee in. So I had to bring in my passport for the I-9 identification and, and fill out a W-4 so they know how much to withhold from my, from my tax, um, or from my paycheck. And they provided me with a very comprehensive employee and manual that I signed and all of my benefits uh, options that I signed off. So that's the onboarding process. There's a lot of documentation involved in that. And then terminating. Um, if that ever becomes uh, an issue for you or needing to lay off, there's timings on when those last paychecks need to be run and some procedures around that. So the next bullet, required documentation. Again, that first bullet covers a lot of required documentation, but there's actually 
uh, posters that you need to display in your workplace. Uh, I don't know if you came in along the side here, but we have a big bulletin board with our posters prominently displayed in our workplace, and that's a, a legal requirement. So that's another level of documentation. HR can act as an employee intermediary if there's an issue with employees amongst employees or employees and managers. They handle the benefits, not just the ongoing administration, but choosing what benefits you're going to be offering to your employees um, at what price levels and then administrating those benefits. And then there's the federal and state compliance issues. So um, the Affordable Care Act, ACA, you've probably heard of it as Obamacare. And um, you know, a lot of us think Obamacare was a way for individuals to get health insurance, and of course that's a big piece of it, but there's actually a lot of compliance and reporting for employers around that. We've gone through that recently with ASL and, and ensuring that we provide employees with all the right paperwork. So there's a lot of compliance and reporting around that Affordable Care Act. The Fair Labor Standards Act, so that's another federal one, uh, under the Department of Labor and they handle the federal minimum wage and things like overtime pay for employees. So knowing all the rules around that. So those are just two of the federal regulations that you have to worry about. In California is a fairly new law for vacation and sick time that's required and uh, making sure you're in compliance with that. So that's just a, a very small sampling of the regulations that there are. Then if you've got employees in other states, you need to make sure that you are complying with those states' regulations. One of the sort of staggering uh, statistics that our HR shared with us, there was 183 new California labor laws in, in 2015. So that's a lot to keep up with. So let's talk about a list of some trusted um, HR service providers and resources. We're going to start with the resources because we kind of have been going in the vein of what if you're doing it yourself. So that we'll start with the do-it-yourself method. At the very least, we'd like to, to make you aware of some resources that you have. One of those is the California Employee Advisory Council. Um, they, uh, as a member, you can attend their low-cost HR seminars about uh, relevant topics for HR. They've got a great website. They have a um, a hotline that you can write into if you have specific questions. And then Cal Chamber uh, is a great resource. Uh, their middle level membership I think is about $620 a year. All of our posters come from Cal Chamber. I noticed their little logo on it. And um, so they can offer you um, information and, and resources about the hiring process and what you can and can't do, employee uh, handbook templates, the posters that you need and uh, partner discounts that may offset some of that cost with um, say FedEx or some of their partners. And one of, the one of the big benefits I see of this one is they have a labor hotline. And you have unlimited calls into that as a member where you can go and ask them any specific question that you have. And I'm thinking, you know, if a lawyer is four or $500 an hour and, and I've got unlimited for 620 here, that's a good value, so I can call in and use them as a resource as much as I need to uh, if I have HR questions. There we go. So if you need a, a different level of that, if you actually need an HR provider and you've decided to uh, do your own accounting or have a bookkeeper or bookkeeping firm do it that doesn't offer HR, then you can go with a local group. We have a local group we've worked with, Melita Group, and they've been in Silicon Valley since 1992, and they can work with you specifically on any activity that you need help with or the full gamut, including uh, benefits and what have you. So it's a good resource where you can actually have almost an outsourced HR department. You can't afford to hire your own HR person. Consider them your, your HR department on an as-needed basis. And then, of course, uh, we have ADP and Paychecks. On top of the payroll services that they can provide you, they can also offer that full level of HR uh, functionality and support. And um, I, I actually was a little bit skeptical, so I wrote my reps and I said, I gave them my list. I said, really, you can help me with all of these things, the hiring and everything? But I'm going to be in the room by myself, right? And they, said, no, actually, if you want us in the room while you're hiring, you know, for whatever level of service fee, we can, we can offer the full gamut of functionality for you. We can support you in anything you need HR-wise. So 
uh, again, for a fee, you can add that on and you could consider them sort of your general contractor, if you will. It's one-stop shopping for you to go to a payroll provider that can also provide and add on those HR functions and take care of your benefits and, and what have you. You could do it yourself, just like you could do your own remodel yourself, but it's going to take you a lot of time to go shop benefits and try to figure all the, the best practices out. So hopefully this is a good time-saving um, method is to go to one person that can handle all those needs for you. Um, Cal Chamber also in... Mark had mentioned our new business guide, our st startup guide. I believe that they're mentioned in our startup guide. Yeah. And w what's cool is there's a lot of live links in that guide. So I think there's a live link to Cal Chamber. Right. And we have the hard copies. We have the ones on the flash drive. Or you can go to our website and you can download that if you'd like to. So that's a great resource. It goes into a lot more depth from you know Cradle all the way through starting your new business and, and de determining what kind of entity you, wa you want to be. So with that, we'll let Fernando kind of wrap up. We can both answer any questions for you.